course, um, we really uh, closed our offices starting the first week in March. And I think like pretty much everybody through February, we thought, who knows what will happen? It should be okay. And uh, thus, first week in March, we had already announced a full season. We already had all the students and faculty and guest artists ready to come. And so it was quite a big pivot uh, there when we began to understand that we wouldn't be able to have anyone traveling in. And um, so working with uh, people really all over the world uh, who gave us some great advice, um, we thought uh, our, our digital content should be unique. That is, everybody is going to be producing concerts. Um, and so if you want to hear an orchestra concert, you can get Berlin Philharmonic or, you know, any LA Philharmonic, any, any orchestra you want. Uh, so we should do things that had the signature of Aspen on them. And for us, that means uh, very important involvement, not only of the world's most famous soloists, uh, but of our wonderful faculty who come every summer and are, are very distinguished performers and then the students who come. And thus to have a picture not only of concerts, which we did do, but also of the educational activity. And in fact, some things we were showing in, in, in our digital season that we've never shown before. So what happens in an orchestra rehearsal uh, when you take a break and the faculty member whose principal horn wants to teach the four other horn players something really important about Tchaikovsky Fifth Symphony. And so we recreated that kind of moment, which happens behind the scenes always, and uh, had master classes, of course. Um, what happens when a young person who's at the festival says, I'm going to be auditioning for you know, the Philadelphia Orchestra in September. Can you help me? And we say, yes, we can help you. And so what's that process like? And we try to give uh, a picture of those. So we were really pleased uh, with it and with the season. And, um, and yet, we were always aware that um, there's a magic of live performance, of sharing the experience of performing. There's a feeling the people on stage have, thanks to the audience, which I think the audience doesn't always understand uh, how crucial a role they play in the experience of the concert. Um, so we, we had that in mind always, and um, now we'll be ready this summer to, to go back on stage. Well, we anticipate, <clears throat> uh, and of course no one knows, but we anticipate that we still will need to have social distancing um, and some restriction on gathering size uh, and certainly masking uh, by the time our concerts start in early July this summer. Uh, we're very fortunate in the tent because it's essentially an outdoor space. And so we will be moving almost everything into the tent. There'll be very limited things in Harris Hall. Uh, actually, the two operas we will produce this summer will be on the tent stage uh, and with very limited accompaniment, but they will have uh, instrumental accompaniment, but I wouldn't call it an orchestra exactly. It'll be Magic Flute by Mozart um, and Handel's uh, opera Rodolinda. For the orchestras, uh, we are also fortunate. It's a very large stage. And we can safely seat uh, about 65 people on it. String players can be closer to each other. Uh, wind players need to be quite far apart, um, uh, especially brass players. For the audience, it'll be quite different because um, you can buy tickets in pods, um, essentially family groups. Um, and then each pod will be separated by at least six feet in all directions. They will all be, I think, at least 15 feet from any performer, even a violinist, um, so they won't come up to the lip of the stage. Um, if we're able to have a gathering of that size in an essentially outdoor place, we can seat about 270 people in the tent that way, as opposed to 2,000 <laughs> if they're crowded in. Then for the lawn, uh, we're going to reserve blanket spaces, so it won't be a free-for-all. Um, but you can have a group of up to six, I think, uh, who are in a pod and it will be uh, required to have a reservation. Um, so uh, people can't just show up with their picnic and find a, a spot. They will have to say um, that they're coming and we'll tell them when to come. And uh, 
So it'll be quite well organized and safe, we think. Uh, that way we can get a thousand people on the lawn in a normal sold out occasion. Uh, we can get about 250 uh, in, on this basis, but they'll still have a great experience. Staff have been champions. Um, every single day has been different from any other day we've ever had. Uh, we never know what's gonna come next. Another aspect is that uh, our board community, our national council community, uh, our, our local people who love what we do have also really stuck with us. And um, we've been so fortunate uh, to have very strong support. We also do feel as though the city and the county have been fabulous for us and uh, just really listened to us and, and been part of what we're doing. So we're, we're grateful.